in the pasture, run them in the pen, work them up the Sundays, do it all again, race them in the sand, buck them in the mud, drip a cowboy's sweat, bleed a cowboy's blood. Hi, I'm Tie Down Roper Tyson Durfee, and you are watching the Pepper Stewart Show. Howdy, fellas. What is going on, peoples? What happened? Found a chicken wow wow. That what are you doing in there? Who's who's what? Hello? What? Found a chicken wow wow. I can't say that. What is he doing? You're tuned in to the Pepper Stewart Show. I don't know why you did, but you did it, and it's your fault. So I don't know. My bad. That's what happened. Let's look around. There's there's guys. Look at them. Who's here? There's they're here. Peoples peoples are here. Either I'm over there or I'm right there. Yeah, you're right there. You're right there. Alright. Just if you wanna if you wanna crank that mic that way, closer to you. To the face what? area? Facial yeah. region. Yeah. How they breaking it? Yeah, oh, facial. How do you play them? Well. What? Yeah. Oh, what? You gotta talk to the back of it. Anyway, you're tuned in to the Pepper Stewart show. Stuff's going down, stuff's gonna happen. Uh, PBR happened. Yellow. PBR stuff going on. What? What yellow, is he? Yellow. I don't know. Yellow. Taco. I don't know. What is going on with that guy? Yellow. Thursday. Yellow Thursday. Mm -hmm. What? It's yellow. Yellow Thursday. Yeah. That's it. All right. Stuff's going to happen today. We got. Uh, we're going to talk to the the uh, head honcho over at Rustic Nation. Okay. See what's going on with that. Uh, we've got uh, Boudreaux Campbell, CBR, bull riding. He put it on them there in uh, Hobbs in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Want to talk to him? We've got some stolen cattle news. We're going to talk about some stuff. Oh, well, uh, I didn't do it this time. Are you sure? Yeah, probably did. I don't know. Can I, can I hear you? Positive. Oh, positive. Can you hear me? Can, I can you hear you now. me now? Talking to the side. You got the, yeah. You got it. You talking to the side of it. I those, are, those are those are professional microphones. You got to take some I courses on speaking into the hole. Yeah, I do. I don't know how to do that. Broadcast courses. They Frog had a course. He did ride. Get them on the internet, he also jumped in front of traffic, too. And that didn't work yeah, out so well. Every time. Every time. Uh, we, we teased uh, last episode about Superman. We might get to that this week. Superman. About Superman. The stuff guy, stuff you know but don't know about Superman. Horse? Uh, yeah, that guy, too. Handy capable? Uh, he's in there as well. He's in there, too. He uh, should be. Uh, I'm boycotting that. Uh, we, we'll let know, what? 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 <laughs> what? What are you doing? Well, uh, Superman's cousin. I think I'll boycott that kill now. What happened? Superman's cousin? Yeah. What'd you do with Superman's cousin? This isn't about Bible. <laughs> 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 what are you talking about? What is going on? Superman, there's a TV show about Superman's cousin on <laughs> KW. Alright. And don't watch that kill ever. Spoiler alert. I know I'm not, I boycott that kill. Superman's cousin shows up. Okay. Uh, was he in a wheelchair too? He wasn't good at riding horses over the, over the wall. Well, well, well. They did. That's what happened. Stuff did happen. A camel Howdy, got I'm lost. Legendary bull rider Dale Brisbane. Camel. February camel. 8th. I didn't lose it. I still can have my camel. What? I'm sure many camels have been lost. Did it get lost or did it not? We're going to tell you about that. Cattle prices. We're going to tell you about the cattle prices. I'm not going to tell you. They're going to tell you because you're going to watch them talk about it. Uh, Halloween when I went up to uh, Estes, Colorado. Uh, it was an interesting place up there in Estes, Colorado. A lot of stuff you see, and we've got a uh, we got a good story from a store. I was in this store while I was there, and something happened. It had a strange visitor, and it wasn't Tex. Estes. Estes. Right. Somebody saw a rat and got a discount. So apparently, if you see a rat, you get a discount. Uh, this is probably, I, I don't know where this story's from. If you've ever been to New Orleans, you've seen the rats. If but! Ever, if you ever eat in a restaurant in New Orleans, you've seen the rats. They have a whole rat speech they give you when you order your food. Uh, yeah. Nasty. No. I have a rat living in my house. Yes, sir, <laughs> we're, we're very close to the water. Every restaurant in New Orleans has You rats. dirty rat! You don't do that! I don't have no water in my house, but I got rats. Ninja Turtles. Huh. Huh. Inter you got a lot of interesting things at your house. I do. I got a lot of people that want to live, come live with me in my house. You know what else is going to happen? We're, 
Yes, that, he's got those. Yeah. Hood rats did, to live at your house? did you know? Did you know that next week we're going to be giving away tickets for something next week? I didn't know that, but now we are. Is aware. They are aware, and uh, and you may it, go with a little date too. You got to go eat chili. What are you talking about? <laughs> so here's what's going down. We're gonna we're gonna let somebody tell you about this, and then we're gonna come back and uh, tell you some stories. So. Howdy, I'm legendary bull rider Dale Brisby. February 18th, the Iron Cowboy, AT&T Stadium. You can get tickets for $20, Ticketmaster. Come and see me, along with some other legends. You got J.B. Mooney, Chase Outlaw's been hot, Ryan Dirt Eater, last year's winner, Shane Proctor. They're all gonna be there, going head to head. One of the biggest bull ridings in the world. Is that Jerry's world, old son? Come to AT&T Stadium for 20 bucks. Come see us, old son. Pow, pow. Jack, oh, well, they got a little bit of extra. extra stuff. All right, here's the deal, guys. If you want to go to the Iron Cowboy, all right, you want to go watch the bull riding at Cowboy Stadium. Here is what you've got to do. All right, if you want to pay full price, hey, if you want to pay full price for your Iron Cowboy tickets, that's on you. You like playing full yeah, price? You want to pay full price like I did because I didn't check. Yeah, if you want to pay full price, be like this guy. And I'm on the show. Pay full price. Full price like a maniac. If you want to save money on your Iron Cowboy tickets for the PBR, pick a, we'll give it away my ticket. No, I got you something better. Chili show? Yeah. Go to pepperstewart.com. When you go to pepperstewart.com, right there on the main page, there's a big picture. Boom. Bull riding. Click on that. Order your tickets and use the promo code TEXAS. Okay? Use promo code TEXAS when you order your tickets for the Iron Cowboy. There you go. And you get ten whole dollars off your ticket. Ten American, whole dollar bills. United States dollars. That's American, American currency. American you dollars. Remember this guy. Not, I'm, not I'm ten, a FOMO code. You should remember me. Not ten pesos. Not ten Turkish lira. Well, if you, if you go American dollars. Now, if you go if you if you go do the use the uh, the other promo code that they got for the American, you only get ten percent off. Right. But if you use Texas and you link from Pepper Stewart Show, ten whole dollars. American dollars. Speaking of superheroes, is he gonna turn to the Green Lantern here in a minute? <laughs> I don't know. Or the Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> he's got he just got green everywhere. Why do you have all the why are you wearing the green sweat? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. What well, <laughs> after Labor Day. Are you wearing green long johns? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's him. He that's what he does. He does that. Right. <laughs> if I remember this, well, uh, Would you dress like Herman? <laughs> I just woke up. Cool. <laughs> Whatever you're he does. He that he does too. I saw the picture. Uh, you know what happened? If you're watching the Book of Faces or the Interweb Net, uh, we did run out to Greenville, Texas, to the Blue Mesquite Grill. If you want to check out the Blue Mesquite Gear Grill in uh, Greenville, Texas, downtown Greenville, Texas, by the way, there was some stuff going down, and one of our featured artists, Luke Wildman, was playing. He played there. So we listened to some tunes from this guy. And speaking of tunes from this guy, we're going to play his tune right here. That's what we're going to do. He's a tune smith. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to play a tune from him. Listen to Luke Wild right here. So the tune he said he wrote, song he wrote about his life, about himself. Well, let's hear about it. So we're going to hear about it. Then we're going to come back and call Boudreaux Campbell. Talk like about bull riding. like to hear it. Here it go. Yeah. in 
a lonely bar Spent many more in the rain Leave these words from a broken heart I breathe these words that I sang You can take what you want from me But you can't take my pride This here is what I was born to be It's what I'll be Leave all the heartaches behind I work and wait all week long The Friday's whiskey and wine The Friday's whiskey and wine So many women have longed for me But I've longed for some of the time I'll drown the misery with me Dancing in the shadows at night The party gets started just about the time The ladies all crowd through that door The fellas will fight just to grab them up Yeah, that's what we're talking about. If that don't set your toe to tap and check your carburetor, something's missing. Don't know what. What are these, these guys? Uh, what you got going on over there? You got some DP in your ear holes or what? Yeah. Whoa. Uh, what? what? Uh, is, that what that means? is that what that means? What does that mean in your yeah. yeah. What does that mean? I, I had a whole bunch of stuff in my ear. You probably don't want to know. What does that mean? It means meet her outside. She's going to do what she got to do. You don't, you don't want to know what I had in my ear. What does that mean? Mean <laughs> is average. Did you know that? Mean means average. Yeah, mean, median, and mean. Yeah. Mean, median, mode. What? Means she'll go outside and do what she has to do. That's right. Because you can have it. Yeah. That's what they'll all do, by the way. They'll <laughs> all go outside and do what they have to do. <laughs> she won't leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? Maybe you, bro. <laughs> What does Superman do? Why don't you tell me about that? You want to know what Superman does? Yeah. Besides fall off his horse and break his GD neck? What does he do? Oh, what did he do? Got oh. all, you got all the color paper over there. All the color paper because Trump's in office and that's okay. All right, so what do you got? Tell me about that. Tell, you, tell me about I'll, Superman. I'll tell you what you don't know. I'll tell you eight things that you don't know about the Superman. Hey. Yule. Oh, hey. Yule. Hey. Yule. Let me tell you eight things about Superman. Superman's creator first envisioned this character as a villain. Really? You know that? What? He was a bad guy. 
Wow. There was a, uh, a high school graduate named Jerry Siegel, second kin to Beanie Siegel, self-published a story in January of 1933 called The Reign of Superman, featuring a mad scientist who plucks a vagrant from a bread line and gives him telepathic capabilities. Well, you're now, the expert. This so-called Superman was intoxicated by power, and then he kills the mad scientist and begins taking over the world until the enchantment wears off and he once again becomes a nobody. Soon after, this Beanie Siegel guy and his friend Joe Schuster revamped Superman as a good guy with an alien backstory, a secret identity, and a cape, because you gotta have a cape, among other features that would come to define him. So several years, this Siegel and Schuster unsuccessfully pitched their comic strip idea to newspapers, all kinds of stuff, and finally, a predecessor to DC Comics asked them to rework it into a 13-page story for Action Comics number one, which would go on to become the most valuable comic book of all time, with one copy selling for 2.16 million American dollars at an auction in 2011. That's how nuts people are. They put two million dollars for a comic book. So, anyways, this uh, Beanie Siegel and Schuster sold the rights to Superman for 130, 130 dollars. Doll, doll hairs? American dollars? Siegel and Schuster earned fairly high salaries writing and illustrating their Superman comics, but they received no royalties having signed away all of their rights to the character for 130 bucks. You gonna give me $130 for all my songs, Mr. Barry Gordy? <laughs> um, <laughs> Siegel and Schuster were fired in 1947 after filing a lawsuit at, against D.C., Financially struggling, Siegel returned to the company in 1959, accepting standard pay and no byline. He left again in 1965 and lodged a second equally unsuccessful lawsuit. When Superman movie began production in the 70s, Siegel put a curse on it as part of a public relations campaign. The shaming strategy worked, as DC's parent company agreed to give him and Schuster pensions of $20,000 a year, well, some uh, later went up. Now. Superman preceded Batman by only a few months. In spring of 39, Superman hit number one. What? And he stands the first comic book that ever devoted to a single character. Soon after DC's other ubiquitous superhero, Batman, made his debut in Detective Comics number 27. Earliest joint appearance came during a 45, 1945 episode of The Adventures of Superman, a radio serial. In the comic book universe, they didn't meet until 1952 in Superman number 76. They coincidentally find themselves rooming together on the same cruise, because that's what superheroes do. Whoa! On Caribbean cruises together, hang out in the same boat. Hoo ha! I don't know about that. I see in video that starts like that. That guy has his house. So, the two often have teamed up and occasionally clashed. Superman versus Batman. Anyway, U.S. government censored Superman during World War II. Did you know that? Well, they didn't like the World War when Germany thought it was a good idea to take on the world, <laughs> which sounds ridiculous, but it's actually real close. <laughs> well, that's not the right sort of attitude uh, in World for you War to have. With the top secret Manhattan Project in full swing, any mention of nuclear weapons or nuclear, if you're in the Bush category, nuclear in the popular press drew the government's ire. Superman's arch enemy Lex Luthor launches an attack, with what he calls an atomic bomb. So the U.S. War Department demanded that the publication be delayed. The War Department likewise censored another comic book written after the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in which Superman films films an atom bomb test for the army. So, you know, <laughs> Superman was in on this. Him and John Wayne were ready to beat Germans and Japanese people. Who knows? So, most Superman interest... This is, this is number five on the list. I don't know if we've been number oh. one. This is number five of the eight things that you don't know. Yeah. Um, no. So his love interests are all initial LL. Cool J is hard as hell. He'll battle anybody. He don't care who you tell. Hard as hell. That's what I like. That's <laughs> 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 yeah, you do, man. I'm all red. So uh, Superman rarely falls for anyone that's not initial LL. Lois Lane, a reporter. Who's been around since the Action Comics number one. She's got red hair too, don't you? I'm not sure if she had black hair on the ones I watched, but that's because I watched them in black and white because I'm old as S. I, I thought I watched the cartoon. You, you hear all the S's pop on these new microphones? Check that out. S. 
<laughs> anyway, um, so competing with her for Superman's attentions are Lana Lang, his high school sweetheart, and Lori Lamaris, a mermaid he dates while attending Metropolis University, and Lila Laryl, an actress from Krypton who meets him when he travels back in time. I wish Louis L'Amour had wrote about this. This would be way more interesting. So, uh, numerous other supporting characters also have initials LL, including Lex Luthor, Lucy Lane, which is Lois's sister, and Linda Lee, it's the Supergirl's secret identity. That's where you come in, you creepy bastard. Yeah, I used to, no, I used to love that kid. I fell in love but with him. But now, because the cousins came in, and you got all sad about it. Yeah, yeah no, we, we heard about it. No, because so, the whole potato of Donald Trump rally. Uh, dear God, all right. Uh, no, we that, don't get uh, political. <laughs> we get, we're talking about Superman. We're <laughs> talking about real stuff, okay? not politics. <laughs> no politics. So yeah. the actors playing Superman often, often suffer grave misfortunes, and that's true. So this so-called Superman curse got to start with George Reeves. He's an actor who played Superman on a 50s TV show. Okay, He was top cast as Superman. He had trouble finding any other work. And in June of 59, he was found dead in an apartment of an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. What? He killed, he killed himself because he's Superman and then nobody else. He thought he was Superman and then nobody wanted to work with him. So he shot himself in the head. But, but the bullet bounced off his chest, right? No, that's not how that works in the real world. That's the famous <laughs> yeah. stuff that you're into. That cult following. So, um, anyway, tragedy also struck in a 1995 horse riding accident, which is probably the most famous. Uh, Lee Quigley depicted Superman as a baby. He died in 1991 at age 14 after. <laughs> Huffing solvents from a can, because that's what you do at 14. You're yeah. Superman babies huffing paint. But, hey, I've uh, done that before. I, yeah. I still do that. You a lot of stuff. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, comic book Superman briefly sported a mullet. That's number seven on your list of eight facts that you didn't know about Superman until right now. They didn't go too far into Christopher Reeves. You see how they glazed over that? I, don't, I didn't like that. Well, I'll tell you the whole story about that if you want. You can yeah, find yeah. on the Twitter box. I would like to give information yeah, about uh, that. In a January, yeah, you would want information about paralyzed dudes in wheelchairs. Um, January 1993 issue of Superman, the Man of Steel dies in a battle with a monstrous villain. He comes back to life. Superman die? Wait, 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 wait. He, he comes died? back to life like Jesus Christ. Okay, okay. okay. He wrote it in the okay. book, so you know it's true. Yeah. So he comes back to life a few months later with his long hair in the back. He's got a mullet going on. He died like Jesus on, on a cross, but he came back with a Joe Dirt mullet. He's, yeah, like, he's like Joe Dirt Jesus. That's what they call him <laughs> on the streets. The Superman was the Joe Dirt Jesus. But it was ridiculed. No one liked it. Okay, so... It didn't disappear until 1996. He married Lois Lane, and she made him cut the mullet. <laughs> kind of, hey, that kind of like the Bible was. The when they made Jesus cut all his hair off, and he got bald like that. <laughs> it it wasn't you. It was, it was a different Bible. It was, that it was, but anyways, it was online, I think I believe it was Campion, yeah. not you. Oh, no, well, we're talking about our Old Testament. Oh on. well, you know, you get you get crazy if you're believing that Old Testament stuff. They got a new one. I <laughs> read it. But anyways, if you want to go online and Google cut the mullet, <laughs> do that. Just do that for fun. Everyone Google cut the mullet right now and think that I'm not ridiculous as, uh, as I sounded when I said that. <laughs> so number eight in the eight facts you did not know in, in, uh, in about Superman until I went on this long tirade, which has taken 20 effing minutes to get through because everything is highlighted in orange and yellow. So, an Illinois town embraced Superman to bring in tourists. So, Superman lives and works in this fictional city of uh, Metropolis, which is the name of a small town in southern Illinois. Really? In 72, Metropolis, Illinois, began calling itself the hometown of Superman, and it still does. When you drive through Metropolis on the way to a real city, it says the hometown of Superman when you your population. The, the Superman still lives there? Uh, no, he's in a wheelchair. He goes around and <laughs> champions handicap stuff. Anyway, they play in the Superman theme park and it fell through. Metropolis continues to embrace the Man of Steel. Uh, police officers wear Superman emblems on their sleeves, and a 15-foot bronze Superman statue stands in front of the courthouse. The <coughs> Superman Festival takes place every June. So if you're looking for something to do in the summer, it's actually beautiful up in the Illinois area in June. You can go to the Metropolis and go to the Superman Festival and see cops with Superman emblems on their arm. Can Some I, of them are even in wheelchairs just to be more realistic. Realistic. Can I do a watermelon fall? 
You can, you can do a lot of crawling. All right, here we go. Let's, let's bring a ding ding. Let's see what uh, Boogro Campbell's up to. That was the worst. That was the worst reading of any article. Now you can take, now you can take a nap. I hope Boogro can save that. Boogro Wilson. That is his name. Campbell. Hello. Okay. Hello. Boogro. Uh, what is going on? What are you up to today? Not much. We're on the road headed to Park City, Kansas for a rodeo. Who's traveling with you? I'm traveling with Derek Jones, Casey Kerwin, and Tyler Bingham right now. How's how's that? How's that road travel going for you? They they doing all right or who's who's uh, who's pranking who? <laughs> we all get along pretty good. Do all the standard driving and. Uh, we all get along. It's a good group of guys. All right. So you don't have any pranks going on while you're traveling? So you you don't have anybody pranking each other out there? And who's the prankster of the group? Oh, prankster's gonna have to be definitely Garrett Jones. <laughs> he, he thinks it's funny to pick on everybody. Uh oh. He says to catch him while he's asleep and duct tape him to the bed. Yeah. Or then his hand to his stomach. <laughs> yeah, that'd be that's a good there. So so CBR bull riding, man. Uh, as far as bull riding, you ever do you ever do anything else? You ever try any bronks or roping or steer dog anything like that? Uh, I used to rope cats when I was little, tie down rope, breakaway, uh, just anything that would get me in trouble. Just kind of on the side. Um, uh, when I was real little, I ran barrels and poles. I did it all. All right, all around. working on the all around. All right, that's a good deal. Now you're talking about you're on the road right now. So when you guys are on the road, where is the go-to place that you guys got to stop to eat while you're traveling? Oh, go-to place where you got to stop to eat. What do y'all say? Mm, Waterburger is always convenient because we're always traveling late at night, and they're really the only place open. Not the Waffle House. There you go. That, that you can always get some good stuff in there. Good stuff in there. So that works out for you. Yes. So you yeah, said. That's pretty good, but it kind of gets old after a while. Oh yeah. Honey but, butter biscuit never gets old. There's always always another place on another road. You oh, stop and travel. So uh. So which bull are you headed to? We're headed to the PRCA Rodeo in Park City, Kansas, and then after that, we're off to Rio Rancho, New Mexico, for the CBR tour. That's a lot of driving. Yes, sir. A lot of driving, a lot of traveling. Now, who's, how, how, how do you uh, how do you guys rotate your driving? Uh, sometimes we just make a bet. Whoever does the best at the rodeo gets to pick when they want to drive. <laughs> Other times, it's whoever's not sleepy. Now, who? Now, which one of these guys in there, when they go to drive, it makes you hard to sleep. You're not sure what's going to happen. The prankster, Garrett Jones, <laughs> definitely. He's 9-0, and he's shooting in and out cars, and he scares me to death. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, there's, al there's always one. There's always one. And you're like, you know, I'm going to go take a nap. And you uh, there's always that one. Yes. There's always, always one. Always one. Well, when you hit back to, uh, when you hit back to the CBR tour, is there a, uh, is there a bull that makes the rounds? at the CBR tour that you just want to get on? Uh, I've always wanted to get on that bull Boomer. He's a white bull that blows up in there and there are always 90 points on him. And I haven't been on him yet, but I've been waiting my chance to get on him. So that's, that's the one you want right there. That's, that, that'd be a good deal. That'd be a good deal. That's yes, sir. He's a great bull. <laughs> good deal, man. So you stay down in Texas. So how, how often do you stay at home? Are you pretty much on the road full time, just every weekend rodeo uh, time? Yes, sir. Pretty much from Wednesday or Thursday to Sunday, and then I'm home during the week as of now. And in the summer, I'll be gone. But I'm home during the week. I gotta take care of the animals at the house. We got horses, bulls, cows, and feed. There's a spittle around the house. We got a little ranch of cows, and we got some lease pastures around us. We uh, we're always tending to some building fence, or I just help my dad out. Keeping you, keeping you busy, keep you busy all the time. Now we gotta. We got a fitness guru in here, and always wanting to know about uh, about your workout regimen. Do you have a workout regimen that you that you stay on pretty regular? Uh, 
Yes, sir. When I have time, when I'm home, I uh, go. I have a trainer. His name's Doug Champion. He's uh, brothers to Rich Richmond Champion, a bareback rider in the PRCA, and uh, I go work out with him in Huntsville. And he runs a CrossFit training class, and then I try to do some CrossFit. And then when I'm on the road, I just try to do a lot of stretches. Now, now when you're in there, you don't run. You don't run into old Sam Medlock in there, do you? No, I know Sam very well. <laughs> but no, I don't run into him in there. He, I think he, he lives more at Conroe. Yeah. So he wouldn't drive all the way to Huntsville, but I, I know yes, sir, Sam Medlock. I know him pretty well. Oh yeah, we went to school together for a long time. I could tell. I could tell some. Yeah. I could tell some stories. I could, but I won't. But I could tell some stories. <laughs> Good stuff. I Oh, 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 if I could, uh, he'd probably get mad at me, but I could tell you some good stories to give him a good hard time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's a good deal. So, uh, so what do what you got planned up for the, for this year? What, uh, what's your goal you're working on? Uh, I filled my permit a couple weeks ago, and I just bought my car, and I'm going to try to make a run and make the NFR this year as a rookie. And I want to, I want to make the CBR finals, and. I'm gonna try my best to win the CPR this year, and it's hard to beat state you know. Yeah, but somebody's got to. That's the deal. Some, yes, sir. Somebody, somebody's gonna, somebody's gonna do it. Might as well be you. Yes, sir. That's what I think. I'm, I'm gonna do my best. I can't think of it like that. I can't stay on all my bulls and everything else is on the place. That's right. Get them, get them covered. Let, let it. You know, as long as you ride your bull, let everybody else worry about their own stuff. But you get them covered, and hey, that's. It goes where it goes. Yes, sir. All right, Mark, I'll tell you what, before we let you go, uh, you got any sponsors anybody you want to throw out there? Uh, Mark Stowe Pro Rodeo is here. Um, uh, Mr. Brent Hodge. Hodge just helps me out with everything I need Our down the road. It's classic. All right, Mark, I'll tell you what, once you get down the road, that way you can see what's going on. So I guess these guys start driving crazy or something. And uh, we'll see you down the road your road, man. Y'all have a good time in Kansas and, uh, and spur one. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You All too. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, that's that's it. That's the man right there. That's the man. That's the man with the, with the plan. Got a plan to get down the road and eat water burger. He's going to get some water burger. Tell go to Kansas, spur some bulls. Go to Mexico, spur some bulls. He's got and hang out with Sam Medlock and Conroe if he wants to do CrossFit together. Oh yeah. Jim and Doug. Did you find them? Nah, no, I didn't. Do you know who I'm talking about? What? Rodeo Brothers. One's name's Jim. Other one's name's Doug. Back in the PBR, 2000s, last name. Anybody know that? Uh-uh. Jim and Doug, they're brothers. Jim was pretty good. Doug, not as good. No? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think Jim and Doug, but they got different last names because they're not voting. No, I can't. I can't put their names together. Jim used to work for me. He's my sales manager and Doug was an on-site estimator. They were both bull riders from PBR. They hung out with Sam Medlock all the time. He used to tell me all kind of crazy stories, but I can't piece their names together and Jim is dead now and I don't know what happened to Doug. So he did. If anybody knows what, what happened to Doug. <laughs> well, you, you would attend Jim Funeral, right? No, I didn't because I didn't know what happened until a year after when Doug was had a bunch of movers that were stuck in Michigan and he couldn't pay their fuel bill to get home. He asked me to help him out. That's a whole other story and a whole different podcast. All right. How about the... Uh, the Mike Kenna Round Table. Listen to that. Yes. Yeah, listen to that. You'll hear all about Jim and Doug. Mm. Stuff happens there. How about something else happens? How about we do this? We're going to throw down a tune. We're going to throw a tune in your ear holes from Artie Rodriguez. Rodriguez. All right, we're gonna do that, and then we come back. We're gonna ring a ding ding, uh, Candace from Rustic Nation. See what Rustic Nation's got in store, and then uh, if we have time, we'll uh, we'll see what the Ninja Bonnie's got going on. We'll find out. You live in Cheyenne, Wyoming And your name just happens to be Ann And even though our love's just getting started 
I really love you more than I had planned But I can sense a little apprehension And believe me girl I understand So I hope I'm not too cute and saying Oh please don't be shy Trust me when I tell you that I'll be here to the end I understand not rushing in, I'm a patient man Oh please don't be shy That Wyoming line And the thought of you just crossed my mind Ain't it funny how a name And a city sounds the same But it's not the city worrying in my mind Oh, please don't be shy Trust me when I tell you that I'll be here to the end I understand I'm rushing in I'm a patient man, oh please don't be shy, yes oh please don't be shy, yes oh please don't be shy. PBR, PBR World Champion, Jim and Doug, we got final. They what happened? They weren't PBR champions. What happened? What happened? What, 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 what? They were just competitors, but I can't remember their effing name to save my life, and they worked for me, which makes me feel even like a worse person. What happened? Yeah. How did you like that tune right there? Like that tune in your holes? That's a solid tune. Solid. No one can help me with the Jim and Doug thing. What? No one can help me with Jim and Doug. Jim Doug. They, were, Jim. they were real grown adult males that that participated in the professional bull riding tour with Sam Medlock. That's a real thing that happened. In fact, someone reach out to Sam Medlock on the Twitter box or the face box or whatever while he's doing CrossFit in an abandoned building uh, uh. and ask him about Jim and Doug the brothers. Doug is still alive. He's still a person that roams the earth. Okay. Uh, they both of them used to work for me, and I feel bad that I can't remember their names. I had a lot of stuff going on in 2012. Plus, I was a raging alcoholic. Well, 2012, definitely when the war was going to end, wasn't it? That was five years ago, and I had a, way too much money and way too little sense. Well, right. and, they, and they thought the war was going to end, too. The Mayans? Are you talking about the Mayan calendar? Yeah, Mayan ca- what? The Mayan calendar ended in 2012. Yeah, well, that's when I stopped remembering names. So maybe those engines were on this time. That could be. How about this, though? We are going to uh, check out cattle prices. Cattle prices? How much cattle or can you buy? No, what that's t- not what he's talking That's not about. talking about. We're going to throw, we're, we're going we're gonna to burn your eyeballs. Here we go. Let's Here we do, go. Let's do it. One, two, seven, nine, go. And begin. On Drovers TV, the winter weather, including ice, snow, and now flooding rains, continues to create stress at the nation's feedlots. Shipments of cattle are slow as haulers have to maneuver weather conditions. That combined with smaller show lists has the editors at Drovers optimistic about increased fed cattle prices this week. Last week's sales were near the 119 mark. This week, prices are already a dollar or two higher. The latest sterling beef profit tracker shows feed yards with profits of $100 to $150 per head and nine straight weeks in the black. Feed yard profitability has improved. 
packer margins have declined, and that may reduce their willingness to bid aggressively on cattle in the coming weeks. Seasonally, however, we'll soon enter a period of increasing beef demand, which should be supportive of prices. That's what happened. That's what happened? Yeah, that's what happened. Did you know? If you don't know, now you know. What's going on in... Did you, I, I just found out that Angela's watching all the way from California. She's the one that did that uh, that live thing from the horse town. Right? Yeah, from well, you know, town. and we've got a lot of folks in California. I don't You're know what... Horse town, watch USA, this stuff. If you guys remember that. We were yeah. talking with uh, some character about ketchup and mustard at the bar. Uh, that happens a lot. Happens a lot. You know, we still got to call somebody, don't we? Let's do it. Why don't you tell me a story about? You got a story to tell me about? Who stole? Tell me about some stolen stuff over there. You know, we're gonna ring a ding ding, rustic nation. Well, you want to know about stolen saddles? You want to know about stolen cattle? Uh, yes. I rhyme when I do these things. Stolen saddles, stolen cattle. Spaghetti. Gate to spaghetti. Gate to gate to that. You do this. Woo! Right. 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 I got saddles or I got cattle. One, two, three, and cattle. Cattle. You want to know about stolen cattle? Because that's what people do in the wintertime. They steal stuff. And you're gonna do, are you going to beatbox for the story? Oh, beatbox. Can you do that for the whole story? No, I, can't. I bet you got the windpipes to do it from all that praying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at All that praying. All right, anyway. Uh, some stolen cattle. Special Ranger Steve Martin. But not the one who was in the Pink Panther or did the old stand-up. But just regular old Steve Martin. From South Texas, he reports the theft of a Polaris Ranger UTV from B County. If you know where that is, that is it's outside of Austin, Texas, somewhere. And uh, four head of beef master cows from pasture in Cleburne County. This is between November 22nd, 25th, 2016, not that long ago. A thief or thieves cut a lock in B County property to steal a red Polaris Ranger six seater UTV. What? I tell you what, Martin also reports that the theft of four beef master cows from pasture in Cleburne County, November nineteenth, twenty sixteen. So a couple yeah. days before, they stole some cat, some cows. They came back and stole the Polaris. Say what? I tell that like an ATV? That's yes, that's what I said earlier when you weren't listening. Oh, okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So two of these bred beef master heifers, eighteen months to two years old. One is branded with the number fourteen over thirty five on the left hip. Others branded with number 15 over 4 on the left hip. Also missing are two older Beefmaster cross cows with a 3M brand on their left hip. One has a number 8 branded on the left shoulder. One has a number 9 branded on the left shoulder. All four cows had yellow tags in their ears. So if you know where those cattle are at, alert Mr. Steve Martin, but not Steve Martin from the jerk. <laughs> what do you think I am, some type of jerk? Chucking yo Not that not that kind of jerk. <laughs> not that kind of jerk. Oh, shit. What? And by law, I did not do it. I did not do it. <laughs> well, at least we're witnesses to know that this gentleman was here while this goes off live on the internet. Tex Travis is not in Lamarck not in a black Jeep Grand Cherokee. But I tell you what, if you're in Lamarck, Texas outside of Houston with a nineteen ninety eight black Jeep Grand Cherokee, they found you out, bro. They're, they're coming. They coming for you. Live on the internet. That's what happens when you're live on the internet. And Amber <laughs> Alerts come out in the middle of your cattle report. But uh, anyways, um, yeah, not the real Steve Martin, but the fake Steve Martin. A guy in South Texas. Don't, don't steal the UTVs and don't steal the cows because Steve Martin, he's a jerk. He'll come for you. Well, that's the perfect time for the alert I, to go I, I Stolen not. cows, stolen, stolen kids. Stolen cows, stolen kids. Alert, alert. We're on high alert. We're on don't it. even know right now we're on high alert. And I did not do it. To my baby just yet, I did it. I did not do it. <laughs> Manny said you did it? Yeah, there we go. The real Manny? Oh, man. That guy. <laughs> Don't trust what that guy says. I'll tell you that. Let's, let's see what Candace says. How about that? Why is Manny watching this live? Hello. Hi, how are you this evening? We are here talking about stuff. We're talking about stuff right now. 
Yeah, um, I have a little bit of an issue with the Superman uh, story. I personally think that Batman should have been highlighted tonight, but I'll let Ooh. it pass. Okay. So, ben next so next week we'll talk about Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's not he's not the <laughs> real Batman, but okay. <laughs> he does Yeah, he he tried. He tried. That didn't yeah, work. he he gets an A for effort, that's for sure. <laughs> oh yeah. So what is going on in the land of the Rustic Nation outfitters? Oh my goodness. We have so much going on right now. Um, we are really excited. Um, as you know, we've we relaunched in July. And we were a part of an affiliate company um, that works kind of like Avon. I don't want to throw the company name out there because that's just not, I, I don't want to speak badly of the company, but we decided that we wanted to, we wanted to change the entire environment. We wanted to have more control over prices. We wanted to have more control over, you know, how items are shipped and so on and so forth. But most of all, we wanted to change the entire atmosphere that we're seeing in the boutique industry right now. And so we're focusing really heavily on who our followers are and really getting to know them. Um, we are not shy about our faith in the Lord. And so what we have going on right now is that we're going to be adding a prayer tab to our website that's going to be happening within the next few days. IT is working on that right now. And we have landed numerous accounts, so we're going to see a lot more product that's going to be coming soon. Um, we're really, really excited uh, that Spurs the Word uh, gear is going to be coming to the shop uh, this weekend. So we're going to be adding their stuff. Um, we're going to be getting some updated stuff from Wallet Buckle and Original Cowgirl, Montana West. Um, we're super excited that Rodeo Rex um, is designing shirts again. And so she's got some stuff active on Teespring right now, and we've got something in the works. We have one of her products. Uh, that we already carry, and so we're really excited to see her line um, starting to expand. We just landed an account with Lane Frost uh, brand. We've got Ranch Dressing. We got Keen's Ranch. Um, we've got County Line um, that's going to be coming up. Uh, we've got the Atlantis belts, uh, the rhinestone belts that are going to be coming really soon. Um, so, I mean, I could just go on and on and on about everything that we've got in the works. But I think one of the things that we're really excited about is the, as you know, you've been interviewing some of our ambassadors, and we just can't thank you enough for the support that you all have been giving us. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, but we are so excited. Um, the, we've, we've talked with our current ambassadors, and we're all on board that we're going to be opening that up again. Uh, it's going to be coming up in spring, um, you know, so anybody who's interested in being an ambassador for our store, uh, you all need to go over and start following us on our social media platforms. We're on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, we're on uh, Panda Rodeo, um, gosh, we're on Pinterest, anyway. But um, I think Instagram is probably the one that we get the most engagement on. It's also the one that we have the most fun on. Um, and I think when people go and they look at our, the feed that we have right now, we get a lot of people telling us, you know, that our feed doesn't look like other boutiques. And that's exactly what we want. We don't want our feed to look like other people. Um, you know, most people who follow any type of boutique, you know that we're a boutique. So you know our bottom line is to sell, make profit, otherwise we're not a business. But we wanted, we wanted to change our feed a little bit. We wanted it to be more of a family atmosphere, one where people actually look forward to seeing. Um, you know, we didn't want advertisement after advertisement. You know, we don't, we don't want to shove our products down. Looking for the best weekly ad deals? Because really our end goal no is, problem. You know, Walgreens has your back. Really Lots of great limited time deals to keep you happy and healthy every day. For who they are. So um, drop by your right local now, Walgreens today for great savings on these featured products right now. and get a hold of um, everything you need. You know, right and now. so we're, we're going to be focusing At more the on happy the uplifting and, and their, the encouraging side that boutiques really should be given to their community. And within the last six months, we have donated 
we've donated over 50% of our proceeds in the last six months. Um, we've been supporting a lot of uh, communities uh, really throughout throughout the country. Um, we've got we've even sent money over to Canada to help to help some rodeo queens, you know, have enough money to be able to attend school, you know, while they're you know searching for their career. Pretty much, um, we just did a sock drive and we donated dozens of wool socks, you know, to our homeless shelter here in Arizona. Um, you know, we too, believe it or not, the Valley of the Sun, we are experiencing, you know, some pretty cold weather, which is really, really odd for us. But, um, you know, and I, I could just, I could talk for hours about the store because I'm, I'm so passionate about it. And the feedback that we're getting from people have been really positive, you know, because we're, we're not focusing just on the sale. We're focusing more on the actual relationship with the customer. And so one of the things that people will notice immediately when they order through us is that, you know, I mean, if, if we know you or, you know, we've seen you on our feed and we see one of your orders come through and we think that there's a possibility that you have ordered the wrong size or the wrong color or, you know, if there's any red flags that come up, we don't just send it because that's what you order. We actually reach out to people and we explain to them, hey, did you realize that this is a junior size and this is not a missus size, you know, or, you know, did, did you catch the description that said that this product runs a little bit small? And because we've been taking that extra step, our return rate is, is less than 1%, and our goal is to get it down to 0%. And the only way that we can do that is to invite more people to start engaging with us on our social media platform and, you know, and to let us know if they want us to follow them back. You know, this is not like a follow for follow because we don't care about the numbers. What we care about is actually creating an environment, um, you know, where we know you and you know us. Yeah. Well, that and that's what you want. You want to put it on on a uh, on a personal level, you know, with everybody exactly. and, and everybody together. Towards, it's more of it's more of people. It's it's more of, of helping people than than customers. Exactly. Exactly, you know, and I think one of the, one of the things you know that a lot of people in the beginning have told us, you know, you don't do don't don't be sharing your faith, you know, don't be sharing scriptures, don't you know, don't be offering to pray for people, you know, and it's like, look, you know, if, if those things if if that offends you in any way, shape, or form, then you can hit unfollow, you can move right along, you right. Know, because we're we're not we're not going to change who we are, and we're definitely not going to hide it. Yep. That's that's it. I, that's how it goes. You know, it's, it's one yeah, of the deals. So, that we're, um, you know, we're, we we are not only looking for just ambassadors, but we're also looking for, for people who blog, you know, because obviously, you know, I mean, we need more word of mouth, you know. Um, but we can say that the followers that we have right now, even though, you know, our numbers, you know, are not, you know, in the tens of thousands like our competitors, they it, it will be. It will be, you know. We have absolutely no doubt about that. You know, our growth has been slow, and we're actually excited that it's slow because it's it's more personal, it's more manageable, um, you know. But of course, it is a business, and we do run it like a business. We're just running our social media a little bit differently than what our competitors are. And and that's how it goes on all social media, just like on a lot of uh, media stuff that we run. You know, all the people that. That are involved in our social media or actual people that interact with the stuff's going on. I mean, you know, you get a lot of those folks, and maybe the competitor you're talking about those people. You know, that they go out there and they'll buy uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand followers, and yeah, well, your number looks high, but you don't have uh, the constant interaction or the the reality fan base of actual people that are right. following your stuff. Yes. Yes, and you know, I mean, social media now, you know, I mean, we have the capability of running analytics on our competitors. Newsflash, you know, not a lot of people realize that, but, um, you know, so most, most people that have, you know, for example, 
there's a particular competitor of ours that has 20,000 followers. And, but if you look at how many people that they have following them versus how many people are actually engaging, right. not just liking a post. Because, you know, the, the thing about Instagram in particular is that a lot of people will hit that heart button, but they never read the caption. Yeah. So, so there's no real connection, you know. So, and on our particular feed, we, uh, you know, we do get more, you know, of the likes, you know, than, than we do the actual engagement. But if you look, if you do the math on it, our followers versus our, our engagement, we have 10% more engagement than our competitors do, but our following is a lot lower. So our end result is that we're actually connecting, you know, with with our tribe, pretty yeah. much. And that's... And I think... Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no. Go ahead. No, I'll, I'll just finish. I cut, I cut you off. Oh, no. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I could... I, you know, I'm so... I'm so passionate about about this company that literally, Tupper, I could I I could talk for hours about it. So you know, and I think I think the the most exciting thing for for myself and the girls, you know, that the, that are in the shop, is that we we get to share not only our love for fashion but our love of the Lord, you know, and I think that's that's why we started the giggle breaks on IG <laughs> is. You know, I mean, because, I mean, how many boutiques do you know actually share jokes or actually invite you, you know, to, you know, to have somebody pray for you? Um, I can't tell you how many times some of our followers that we've seen, um, you know, who we follow back, you know, and, uh, you know, gave us that invitation to actually be part of their lives and not just the other way around. But, you know, we've seen that they've had a bad day, and we have we have asked them, hey, what's your address? We just want to send you a little bit of a card. And, well, it's never really a card that we send. You know, we end up sending them, you know, some free products, something just to uplift, you know, and to make their day a little bit better. I don't know of any other boutique that is actually doing that, you know. And I'm not saying, you know, that we're doing anything groundbreaking. We're just actually treating people like family, which is what our company motto is. So when people actually follow us, we send them a personal message, you know, and tell them, hey, welcome to the family. This is why we're treating you like family. And one of the main reasons is that, you know, when you sell something to a family member versus something that you sell, you know, to somebody that you don't know, how you conduct that business is completely opposite, correct? Yes. Yes. So, when, when people buy from us, um, you know, number one, we're welcoming them to the Rustic Nation Outfitter family, and we're giving them reasonable prices. So, our profit margin is actually pretty low, you know, but we're able to stay in business because, obviously, because of the volume that we're selling. And, but neither here nor there, the, it comes back to... The Western industry in itself is extremely expensive, you know. You want a good pair of jeans, like Bullet Blues, for example, you know, you're going to pay $150 for those. Now, our, our cost for that is obviously less than 150 but not by much. And so that's one of the things that we, that we will never change is that we wanted anybody in in this industry, you know, whether you're writing professionally or just, you know, putting your boots on the weekend, to be able to afford to dress the way that you want to be able to dress without it breaking the bank. And that's the most important thing to us is to treat you like a human, give you the customer service that you actually deserve, and to not charge you more than what the product should actually be worth. That, that's what it's all about right there. Well, I just, oh my goodness, I'm so <laughs> excited to be on tonight. So thank you so much for allowing me to ramble. <laughs> well, that, that's, what, just, that's, I, what, that's what we do. The, the more you ramble, the less I have to. How about that? <laughs> well, you know, the girls and I, because see, I, I, I started this business and then my it's my daughter and my niece. And so it's the three of us, you know, who you know, who are running this thing, 
you know, and the girls are in college, and, you know, my daughter Brittany is, you know, getting her degree in marketing, you know, so obviously, you know, I mean, she leads a lot of, a lot of that stuff, and, you know, my niece is, you know, helps a lot with, in the shipping, and, you know, I, I like to think that I'm just the brains of the company, and I just come up with the big ideas, and the girls just figure out how to make it happen. Well, that works. <laughs> so, I mean, it is totally working. So, but I, I think the, the, the biggest thing that we're just really, really excited about is that, you know, we're, we're finally starting to get reviews on the, on the website. I don't know why it's, it's been like trying, it's been like pulling teeth almost, um, you know, because we, we get a lot of people that say, yeah, hey, I got my product and it was absolutely great. And they'll send that to us in a private message, and we're like, hey, can you go say the same thing on, put it on the review on the website, you know, or even a review on Facebook. And for some reason, we just, that, that, that's the only thing that we really, we really need to work on, and we, we need to try and convey in a, in a nice family, <laughs> a nice family way is, you know, please, you know, even, even if it's bad, you know, we're not, we're not looking, you know, for anything that's not honest. Because obviously, you know, I mean, if they get a product that they don't love, then if we get enough feedback on it, we don't want to carry it anymore. Right, right. So I guess, you know, anybody that's listening, you know, I mean, we we invite you and we encourage you, you know, to, you know, hop on to Instagram, you know, and find us, you know, at Rustic Nation. We, we would love, you know, to have you, you know, in our tribe, you know, I mean, or, you know, you can find us on Facebook. Um, you know, we share different stuff depending on the platform that it is. Because as you know, with your show, you know, it's it's not a one size fits all. Right. That's, that's it. So let's do that. Let's throw out there right quick before we let you go. Let's throw out the website for those folks to go find some stuff. Uh, they can go to www.rusticnationoutfitters.com and we we just overhauled the site so it's it's more friendly to navigate via mobile all right um, you know so you sh- you know they'll be able to find what they need and we have a coupon that is going to be announced on instagram uh for february okay so you know you definitely want to come check us out on it on instagram well, we will do that we'll tell the folks to go instagram to the facebook and the website and check you guys out and uh send them that way appreciate you visiting with us and we will see what Pops up next on Rustic Nation. Yep. Thank you so much. I hope you all have a good evening. Thank you. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. That was Candace Larson right there. Talking about stuff. Telling you about stuff with Rustic Nation. Rustic Nation Outfitters. Look it up. Check it out. And uh, look in February for the coupon and buy stuff. Coupons. Do it. Do it. You got coupons in February. You need to buy stuff from Rustic Nation. You go on Instagram. You go on the Facebook. Do whatever you want. You find it, you buy it. You know I'm buying it. I know you're buying it. They're fans of Jesus. You're fans of Jesus. We're all grouped together in a big Jesus meeting and buy a rustic nation. Yep. Outfitters. Outfitters. Everything. Because it's cheap and it allows you to look like this right here. Yeah. Does it? In fact, I'm telling all my friends about it. All my Chuck yeah. friends about fact, this. you should share it on Facebook. Share it on Facebook right now. Tell them Instagram in February. Go to rustic nation. Dot com. Get your outfit on, son. I'll make you do that right now. What about a camel? What happened to your camel? Can you get a cam- I don't think you can get a camel on Rustic Nation, though. I don't know if you can get a camel on Rustic Nation. we got to hurry and do this because it's already past time, but everyone's real upset about not getting this camel story. <laughs> yeah. So if you've been following the Facebook. Though, oh, yeah. They're pretty PO'd about the camel story not getting broadcast. But well, I'll tell you about a camel. Do it. He was abandoned. This camel was abandoned, left for dead. I don't know, maybe not for dad, but he was abandoned for sure at a toll booth after an owner argued over the cost of the toll booth, which I do every time I go in the airport. I don't know how many times you guys frequent the DFW airport. You didn't get a sandwich or nothing. What? Yeah, you go in and out. So what, what happened? You might be into it. I don't know. You know, I'll I'll in the airport all the time. In and out, in and out. It's a burger place. It's a terrible burger place. They, they hopped it up like it was fantastic. I went to California. I lived there for two years. And that line is still around the block I to think, this day. I think this guy said, hey, move the camel. Move the camel. Speaking of in and out, you know, you know in and out had gospel message on the cotton? 
I'll tell you what. I'm not a fan of the In-N-Out actual sandwiches and fries and all that. I don't like their food. It's not that good. Oh, what are you no, no, hey, how do you make I watched that? the Big Lebowski. I lived in California. <laughs> it's a fantastic place to get a hamburger. But the only reason I really like them is their menu. When you drive up, it says you got burgers, you got fries, you got cold. What do you want? And then get the F out of my store. You know how they just, they just uh, scooped up camel poop? Well, that's that's pretty much what their burgers taste like. It ain't water burger, it's camel poop. That's what you're eating. You're eating fries, camel poop, right? I want to know the in out burger in California, you know, Elm Street? It's not on Elm Street. I it's on North Hollywood near Radford. Okay? That's where it's at. That's where you want to go. Okay? It's on, actually, it's on Camrose. Okay? Camo, they, yeah, that's it's what it was. Camrose. What? North Hollywood near Radford. They got camel burgers? Is that what's going on? Not Camrose, but camels. I'll tell you about this camel that was abandoned in a toll booth after the owner was arguing about the cost. This is from Ben Hooper. Not Stan Hooper, but a minute with Ben Hooper. Why ben Hooper. Why is doing that? I <laughs> said Ben Hooper. Why is that the guy that used to teach in church? Why are you acting like that? What, do I lost Blanco and Jumper? All right, so uh, <laughs> I got a little glitter. He did, he did know a guy named Ben. I saw pictures. You got a little glitter in your eye when you said <laughs> Ben Hooper. You started doing magical stuff. Okay, so these drivers at a Chinese toll booth. This is a Chinese. It's not a toll booth. At a Chinese toll booth. They were left scratching their heads when they found out their path was blocked by a camel abandoned by a man who was arguing with the toll booth workers. This video that I guess we already saw was uh, while we were babbling. We were going back and forth about nonsense. January 17th at a toll booth in Chongqing. Chongqing. You know what that is? The, that's the city in China. Chongqing. 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 It shows the camel. Is that camel from China? Camel from China. It's a Chinese. Camel. camel. Chinese camel. So, well, say it together. Chinese camel. So, is in Chongqing. Does this camel have a camel toe? He's got four <laughs> camel toes, Captain Obvious. Okay. Oh. All right. So, uh, this camel Duh. with four toes in Chongqing shows the camel blocking one of the toll booth gates that was abandoned by its owner. The owner just got up and left. He said, well, F this, I'm out of here. He didn't pay the, he didn't pay the he toll. He didn't pay the toll. He didn't pay the toll. He was arguing with the toll workers about the cost of taking the camel through the booth, and he ended up saying, F this, I'm going to the bar. I'm going to the restaurant. You guys deal with the effing camel. He's going to block in traffic. His camels are super stubborn, if you don't know them. You haven't been doing camel stuff with them for years. They're pretty stubborn about moving. They're like donkeys or asses. If like You're so me. inclined. Yeah, real asses. Like you. <laughs> so anyways, I tell you, you know what? The guy went, he went to a bar. He went to a restaurant. And what, I'll tell you a story. Where'd he go? What bar? I don't, I'm not sure what bar he went to, but I'll tell you about the bar that I went to the one time that I was in China. I went, went to China? I went to China. Chinatown? I went to play a baloncesto. <laughs> I went to play baloncesto. Baloncesto. Like a ballet? I like ballet? Basketball, chief. <laughs> like if you speak Mexican, you'd know that that's basketball. I went to play la baloncesto. Somebody's what? stealing people. What? Somebody forgot to turn their phone off. Uh, no, it's a black Jeep Grand Cherokee in Lamarck, Texas. So if you're down there by the water in Houston, watch out for black Jeep Grand Cherokee because they're stealing kids. All right? All like right. Any subway in the area. So the camel go. got kicked out. And picked up later. All right. The camel was kicked out, picked up later. But I'll tell you a story about the time that I was in China. Yeah. All right. You tell him about that. I went to play up. basketball. I went into a bar because that's what you do when you're in there and you don't know what's going on. No one speaks English. You get scared and you want alcohol. You go straight to the bar in China. That's what I did. My first thing, I went to play baloncesto in China. I was recruited. I went to play basketball for a, a Olympic Jones Cup national team. Bar, 2000. China. That's what I did. My first thing. 14. 2014, I went to a bar in China. I went in there and I sat down. I was super nervous because I didn't know what was going on. And everyone was at my size because I'm a little guy, but they're around my size or smaller. Anyways, I went to the bar. I sat down and the Chinese bartender, this Chinese bartender says to me, he says, Ah, how you do? What, the, what you like? That's what he said to me in American language, English I could speak. He looks at me and he says, what the, what you like? And I'm like, I don't know what to order in China because I'm not sure, right? So I go with only foreign vodka I know is Russian. It's Stoli. Stoli Naka, as the case may be. You know what Stoli is? No. It's a very famous, very popular Russian vodka. So I says, I says to the guy, okay, 
I says to the guy, I says, I says to the Chinese bartender, I says, uh, you know what? Give me a, uh, give me a stoli. Ah, stoli? I was, you know what? Give me a stoli with a twist. I want a little bit of lime in there to get it down. Give me a stoli with a twist. And the bartender says to me, he says, Ah, stoli with a twist, huh? Well, once upon a time, there were four bears. <laughs> <laughs> Look out! Hey, well, you uh, ain't right. You ain't right. So the police were summoned and ordered the owner to remove the camel and pay a fine. That's the end of that story. Or story, right. as the case may be. I'm going to tell you a story right now. Here's a story for you. You tell me four bears. <laughs> when I was up in uh, Colorado. Bears. Colorado. I was in Colorado. I was in Estes, Colorado. All right? I don't Wait, know man. about it, what? Way up north, while I was up there, uh, we saw some elk. At first, I thought they were a moose. Look, I, did, I thought it was a moose. I didn't know. I'm from Texas. I don't see stuff like this. So, like, look, 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 a bunch of moose. And then, because I was doing a live stream Facebook video, and somebody's like, that's not a moose. That's an elk, you idiot. I was like, oh, well, I don't know. It's just big. That's delicious, by the way. If you ever get a chance to put one down, you eat your little. What are you doing? So, I was like, okay, well, it's an elk. All uh -huh. right. I was like, okay, what's an elk? Well, anyway, we saw the elk, and then we went over to our uh, historic hotel we stayed at there for the uh, Halloween costume party, and a bunch of elk just bombarded the hotel, and the people were trying to chase them off, and the elk was chasing them. I need to post those videos at some point, but uh, the strange thing about that was elk are just everywhere over there, all over the place, so here's what happened. What are you looking at there? An elk wandered into a Colorado store and stood calmly while the owner, for several minutes before, being lured out by police, bearing apples. The store owner, Paratik Shakia, the owner of Waterwheel Gift Corner, slash marijuana dealership, possibility, uh, water, allegedly, Waterwheel Gift Corner store in Estes Park. I've been in that store. I went in all those stores. It's like a mini canton over there. You just have gift shops next to each other you go through. And then marijuana, restaurants. Plenty of marijuana. I didn't see that there. I don't think they have it over there. I don't know. Or if they did, I, they were hiding well, it from Well, if you're looking to grow marijuana, i got five acres in San Luis Valley Ranches. It's for sale on eBay. Go ahead. <laughs> well, he spotted this elk by the door. The elk walked through and he watched him. Uh, so he watched this elk while he was lured out by the police. If you want to hear this guy talk about it, we'll let you hear this. By the way, or not? Maybe will they hear it? He, he was talking. At one point. Possibly. Oh, bitch. What? Hey, call it gay. Call it gay. You enjoy. I can hear you. By the way. Yeah. I think everybody heard you. Still on. <laughs> uh, <Jeez>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway, that's what's going on. This elk's in the store. Well, howdy, call it gay. Give him a little shout out. Yeah. You got a shout out? You what? What are you doing? I, got, I had to get a shout out to my middle number of one fan. story about Colorado. We're talking about Colorado. He's a I had to get a little shout out. No one gets a shout out. <laughs> if, listen, if they yeah. don't like the Stoley joke, no one gets a shout Didn't out. Didn't you That's learn funny. your lesson? Didn't you learn your lesson from this? You are right there. That's funny. Didn't you learn your lesson off storytelling? Yeah, and joke telling and shout outs for <laughs> that matter. Don't do it. Bad for your health. Then you did you try to get somebody fired from the show for I that? Got, I got fired for weeks. Then you get somebody fired for screenshot and stuff, mm. or not? You're not gonna say it out loud. You stopped talking. <laughs> he got everyone, quiet. Everyone got quiet. I didn't do nothing. I don't let's know. put the camera on. Let's. let's I, I played the fifth. He don't drank the hate, fifth. Don't you hate when you get screenshotted, <laughs> bitch? That DM wasn't for everybody, <laughs> right? <laughs> Right? Am I right? <laughs> don't you tell them? Catch me outside. How about that? And, and don't record people. Yeah. Don't record people and get it. Just because I'm on Snapchat, <laughs> don't pull my chicken oh, oh, out in front of everybody. Don't pull my chick fil out. <laughs> He's asleep. He was quiet. Just yeah, because you're sending rooster pics all around, <laughs> guys and girls alike, don't mean it's for everyone. <laughs> uh, I would do that. California. Yeah, you do. You're, you're a California folk. 
Me? The, yeah, I you, was. you were there at one time. So what happened? Do you know what Melina happened? Lopez? Listen, I know a lot of Molinas. Okay, some of them work for WWE. You like that kind of crazy s? I like that. I like the Molina. You know Molina, where she did the splits and she rolled into the ring. I've seen her. Well, at least twice. He, anyway, he had that, like, what are you asking me about? I'm at California. I think, oh, oh, you know, I, I'm a California forgot, kid. I forgot to throw us out our comments going on, but uh, apparently Tennessee Tiffany knows about camels. By the way, she knows about camels. She knows about humps. One or two humps. I don't know, but what about There's California? Stubborn. You can get a discount in California. You know that, right? You know in California? I get discounts at all Ralph's for my Stoli. I'll tell you that. I get discounts at Ralph's for my Stoli. Uh, you can get a discount in uh, California right here. Let me show you this receipt, and then you guys tell me what you think about this receipt oh, right here. All right. The manager of a California restaurant where customers' receipt revealed a $30.95 95 cent scene rat discount. <laughs> <laughs> a post circulated in the Folsom area Facebook group during the weekend oh, was written by a woman who said she was sharing the story on behalf of a woman who don't use Facebook. So somebody's Boston getting County. somebody's Johnny Cash is from. so somebody's getting all up in somebody else's business. Like I don't have Facebook. And somebody's like, oh, you know what? This would be viral. Let me take a picture of it and stick it on there for you, so I can cause trouble because people like to be nosy and take other pictures of other people's stuff and share it around. So that's what happened. Especially I'll in the Folsom, <laughs> where the county prison was, where Johnny Johnny Cash. So this well, anybody right. paid eighteen dollars for orange chicken? <laughs> <laughs> it's California. That's what you do in California? You pay eighteen dollars for orange chicken. Really? It's Hennessy and orange juice. That comes so this <laughs> this woman, the woman believes she would speak, <laughs> she would be speaking to a manager, but instead was handed a receipt. By her server with thirty dollar ninety five cents knocked off her bill for scene rat. Scene rat. Kevin Fat, oper- oh. chief operation officer of Fat's Restaurant Group, said that the incident was highly unusual and was it's a- not. as the note on the receipt. I'll be honest, it's not. We see rats all the time. All the time, I. I, I get rats all the time too in my house. Who rats? rats. The uh, manager uh, put it verbatim what the guest saw or stated. That's not the normal practice. So, do they see rats a lot? And they're just, they give them your discount for seeing it, but you just don't put it on the receipt. I tell you what, if you're in Folsom and don't see a rat, you might want to see that on your receipt. (laughs) The Sacramento (laughs) County Environmental Management Department sent the health inspector, who also didn't find any signs of infestation. For example, there was no poop. There were no live or dead bodies. (laughs) No nesting. No gnawed food packages. The inspector, I'm going to tell you right now. If somebody saw a rat at your restaurant and you put rat on the receipt, they're going to thoroughly clean the, that place before anybody shows up. So, yes, of course you didn't find anything because they cleaned the place up. i tell you what. It's Allegedly. Not, I'll tell you what happened. And I'm not, I didn't read the story. I don't know the story. But I know California. What happens is it's cold right now. It's raining right now. Those rats that are probably in the river and they're hanging out doing whatever they what rats do, they're trying to seek shelter right now because it's raining and it does not rain in California. It just don't. It's not a thing. Three, four, five, six days a year they got rain. Two, three days they got earthquakes. Otherwise, a bunch of spoiled rats out there voting for Hillary. They don't got a lot of stuff to do. There's not a lot of worry in California. So they got rats. Now it's a big deal. Because it's been raining a lot, and them rats are trying to get out of the water because they're not New Orleans rats. They're Sacramento rats. Okay, so they're used to sunshine and happiness, not New Orleans where it's just hurricanes and death. So they're trying to get inside, and that's what happens with the rat population in Sacramento, San Francisco, anywhere in the northern side of California. They're just trying to get inside, man. So people aren't used to seeing rats, so when they get, they get a rat problem, they say, hey, Put that on a receipt and give it for him. Give it to him for free. And let's just say, seen rat. <laughs> As, uh, that's what we'll tell him. We'll just comp it. We'll just comp it. A seen <coughs> rat. I tell you what. I was in Northern California not two months ago, and they didn't comp me nothing. I went to Kaz Comedy Club in, in Northern California where you drive down that crazy street with all the flowers and all the hippies and homeless people that take a, uh, <laughs> they, say that they take a S in the street. You know, because that's what they do in California. They're very accepting. The acceptance in California is much like your Bible, your New Testament. Not the old one. Not the real one, but the old, the New Testament that you're into. They're very accepting of all that kind of stuff where they take an S in the street and you got to walk over it to get into the comedy club. 
<laughs> it's bad for everybody involved, and they like rats, and they'll just accept anything. You're born president, crazy pre- black president, suicidal crazy, f- uh, effing, uh, we well, yeah, asked. Fudge sickles? Yeah, what? Fudge sickles. Yeah, where you break them in half and save the rest for later. How about we save the rest for later and we get on down the highways and byways of Texas because we have burnt you guys up for an extended amount of time. But that's what we do. We don't have no rules. We have no restrictions. Or we do a little bit. Minuscule. Minuscule. So no, anyway. Mini camel. Mini donkey. I didn't even get to my rant on snakes on Craigslist yet. Not even snakes on Craigslist. But on, you got, if you go on I pets, you check this out. camels in China. Check this out. If you go on the, with a twist. if you're looking up pets on Facebook, you go on my Craigslist. If you're on Craigslist, you Four search bears. pets. There are stinking snakes on there, man. You there are like snakes that? on Craigslist. He didn't like that joke. Okay. He didn't like it. He didn't savvy. He said no savvy way. I was in China. It's a Russian vodka. Oh, yo, no. He asked me. What? Okay. What you like? I said stoli with a twist, and he said, oh. Stoli with the twist. <laughs> Listen to this. Stoli. Ah. Stoli with the twist. Once upon a time there were four bears. No? Stoli. Confucius say. Confucius say Stoli with the twist is GD hilarious. There's you know, four bears. You know what else is hilarious? That's the end of the story. Find the next guy, Text Travis. Look him up on Facebook and on uh, Farmers Only Text Travis. He's because there. I am the master. What? Don't be ridiculous. He's crazy. The other guy, go look him up. Follow him on Facebook. Mike's of the Round Table. They have stuff on there. They do stuff. That's we do stuff. Hey, we're going to do a live podcast for the Soup Bowl. If you like Soup Bowls, not just regular Soup Bowls, but the actual Soup, soup Bowl. Yeah, soup. Not soups. Doing it, you bowl, are you? Not no, soup. You can't say the word. We're not show the Soup Bowl, so you got to watch it on yeah. your own. But you can turn Troy Aikman and Joe Buck down because they're they're a little bit of a downer. But listen, I'm gonna tell all my Chinese jokes, all my vodka, my Russian vodka jokes. Are you gonna do commentary on the Super Bowl? I'm, I'm, we'll you can't say it's Super Bowl, but you can say the big game. Yeah, we don't need uh, uh, lawsuits. Yeah, we're it's, not gonna do it live. It's like illegal. Live, but if you want to do a broadcast podcast during the Super Bowl, you watch us. Mike's yeah. round table on the face box. Facebook. We're do it. Live. Live. It may not even be live, but it sounds better when you say live. Football Sunday. You gotta say football Sunday. Football Sunday. I may have to join you, but I may be stuck. With no, me. you're gonna come to the GD Colony and hang out with me in my place because I bought a bunch of whole nice furniture and microphones mm-hmm. and stuff. It's yeah. A good time for everyone involved. I think I got my thing. Don't. But the F this chili guy. Okay. Watch the Mike's no. Round Table All Super right. Bowl Sunday. The end. The end. Find them. Look them up. Check them out. Everything else is going on in the world of stuff. Look it up on PuppetStore.com. Wander around. See what's going on. And uh, do it. And eat some elk. Yeah, I got to be.